Hi, welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this timeline infographic in Word. I'm going to be showing you how to insert the text boxes, the text, customize the text and how to adjust the color and add a gradient. I'll then be going on to show you how to insert the arrows and the graphics and how to align everything. Then onto your titles and your customization of text and then finally your colors and how you can adapt those to suit the look and feel you're going for. And of course, how to finally export it. So I've opened a new document and I'm just going to turn this page around to landscape. So go to layout, orientation, click on the drop down and select landscape. The first thing we're going to do is insert our text boxes. So go to insert text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box and just click and draw out a text box and then we'll insert our text. Once you've done that we can customize the text and customize this whole box because then all we have to do is copy and paste it. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of the text, go to home and go to the center text icon. You don't have to do this but I want to center all of my text and then I'm going to select my title and then go to home increase the size of the title and click bold. Now if I deselect we can see the title's quite close to the borderline so if we select the box go to shape format and go all the way over to this format pane and then we've got a whole series of menus here. If we go to shape options and then we go to this icon here here we can deal with all of those margins. So we want to increase the top margin just move that text down so I'm going to use this up arrow here. As I click, you can see the text moves down to a little bit more of a central location in my text box. Then I'm going to go to this icon here, which is the bucket. This is where we deal with the color of our text box and the borderline. So let's just open up both of those. And the first one I'm going to address is the borderline. We've currently got solid line and we've got it on black but we can increase the size of the borderline down here at width. And I'm just going to increase this to one. Deselect it, perfect. And now we can go to solid fill or gradient fill. So solid fill here, if you want to change the color, just click on any color. Now you see what's happened is I've actually now on shape options and it's changed. So let's go back one step, command or control Z. We'll go to shape options and go back to the bucket icon and you can see we've got solid fill here and then if we go down to color you can choose any color or you can go to gradient fill. Now in the gradient fill we've got it set to linear and we've got direction top to bottom and then we've got our colors here and here. So you can change the colors if you select one of these markers you can see it's selected because it's got the orange borderline Go to color and then you can select any color of your choice and then we'll leave that on white. We'll in fact choose a blue color and I'll show you how you can quickly look at color palettes at the end. So let's deselect the box. If you're happy with the way this box looks then all we need to do is copy and paste it. So select it, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag and then depending on how many you need just keep clicking and dragging until you have the exact amount that you need. And the way in which a timeline works is often you'll have more on the top than the bottom or vice versa. And that will become more obvious when we put in the graphics. So I'm just going to select all of the bottom ones here and I'm going to move them down. I'm going to deselect them. So I'm just going to move this right hand one and the left hand one to exactly where I want them on the page. So I want roughly about this much space on the left and right hand side. Once I have chosen that, we will perfectly line it up in a second, but once we've identified how far across the page we want these boxes, I'm going to select them all by holding down the command or control key. I'm going to go to align and go to distribute horizontally, and that means they're now all equally spaced. And again, I'm then going to align to the top. So now they're all perfectly lined up. Then I'm going to go to group and select group and now they're all one group. Then I can go to align and align them to the center of the page. So this group's now all perfectly lined up. 
And now what we want to do is line up these as well. So I roughly want this square here to be in the middle of this section here or this space here. And the same with this one, little square at the bottom in line with this space here. Now we can select them all again, holding down the command or control key. And then we can select a line, distribute horizontally, align, align to top. And once again, we can just group them together. And then once again, we can align to the center. So now we've got all of those lined up, we can now go ahead and put in the graphics. So go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and select a rectangle or a square. Click and drag out a rectangle, roughly the length of your timeline. Then we can go to shape format once it's selected. Go to the outline and select no outline. Go to shape fill and just select black. Deselect it, check you're happy with the width. And then we can go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and scroll down and then just find this arrow here. Then just click and draw out an arrow. And then if we make the stem of the arrow roughly the same width as the black line here, Again, on shape format, take out the outline. There will be an outline on all shapes that are inserted into Word, and then just turn it black. So I'm going to grab this arrow, and then I need to reduce the size of it. You can make these as big or small as you want. It's completely up to you. So let's just change the height. If it's awkward here, just select it, go to height, and let's change that to 0.4, press enter, Okay, maybe 0.5. And then we'll just move that up with the arrow key. So then all we need to do is select this now. Let's press Command or Control C, deselect it, Command or Control V. You can see it's appeared up here. And I want a few more of these arrows, so I'm just going to keep clicking Command or Control V until I've got all the arrows I need. I always tend to have more than I need, so I can just easily delete them. If you want to check they're all perfectly aligned, again, hit the command and control key and just select them all. Then go to shape format, align, align to top, deselect, perfect. And now we're going to grab one of these and we're going to rotate it all the way around until it says 180 degrees. And then we might get rid of these. Just move that one down to here. Once they're all in, just select them all again by holding down the command or control key. Again, shape format, align, align to top. And then once again, using the arrow keys, just move those to where you want them. Once you're happy with that, we can select them all. And there's another way that you can select all of these without having to hold down the command or control key. You select one of the elements, go to shape format and go to selection pane. Here you have a list of everything you've put into your document. And you can see we've got up arrows here. And if you don't know which one this one refers to, just use this eye tool here to just click on and off and you can see which one it's referring to. So you see we've got all of these arrows here and what I can do is click on the top one and then including the rectangle which is the one that goes straight across the page I can hold down my shift key and select everything and as you can see everything's now selected. We can go to shape format, go to group and select group. Now all of that is one group and then if we really want to we can close down all the groups select the top one, hold down the shift key, select the bottom one, and then go to group and select group. And now the whole of this timeline is now one group. And we can go to align, align to center. Now we're going to insert the title. So go to insert, word art, and click the black one. We can just move that up here. Then we can insert our text. Command or control A to select it all. And then just go to shape format, align, align to center, and then select all of the text, go to home, and then click on the drop down and we can select a different font. I'm going to go to bold, 
and then I'm going to select this text only and I'm going to go to shape format and then I'm going to click on the drop down here and select this style here and then once that's selected I'm going to go back over to my format pane here or format shape then I'm going to make sure I'm on text options and then I'm going to remove the fill color which is currently white so I'm going to select no fill so whatever color the background is it, it will it will shine through and then to the line I'm going to have solid line and I'm going to select black I'm just going to increase the size of that line to one check I'm happy with it I'm going to move it up a little bit just make this a little bit smaller and then go to insert text box draw text box click and drag out the text box and then in here I'm just going to put some tagline text and then I'm going to select both of these holding down the command or control key go to align align to center and then group them together so the title is now one group or just need to remove this outline here so select this outline go to shape format go to the outline tool and select no outline just deselect it there we go making sure that's in the center we'll select it and go back to align align to center so if we just zoom out we can see how the whole thing looks and for me I just need to move the whole timeline down a bit so select it just move that down and I'm just going to move the title down as well deselect it great I'm happy with that now the other thing that you can do and this is only going to work if you want it as a visual but not to print out if you go to design we've got a few options here we can change the page color so if you click on the drop down and let's say I select this blue here you can see how that changes the background you can see it hasn't changed this text box here so select it go to shape format shape fill no fill but if you print this out it won't print the background blue it will print it out white so this is only for a visual so if you're going to use it as a PDF file or a screenshot or you're going to use it just as a plain word document be absolutely fine if you did want a background to print out blue then you'd have to insert a shape so you'd have to go to insert shape then you'd have to click and drag out a rectangle then go to send backwards center back and that would be your background and you'd be able to print that out however the unique thing about using the background color from word is that if we go back to design if we go to colors we've now got a series of color options from word so if we click on this one or any of these you can see that it will change both the background color and the foreground color and you can simply go through and you can check out lots of different options as you go through so now you've completed it you can do any customization you can see all my titles and my text are exactly the same but obviously you'll customize everything to suit your needs and all it is a case of is just simply clicking in the text box highlighting the title changing it going to the home tab and maybe you want to change the title color or the title font it's completely up to you so now to exporting this you've got several different options if you go to file you've got the option of simply saving this just as a word document or if you go to save as you can go to file format and then click on the drop down and you have the option here of saving it as a PDF file in addition if you go to file you can save this as a template this will save in your templates file so when you open word templates will appear so save it under templates I'll show you what this means in a second save it make sure it's under templates and the file format is word templates if it's not just click on the drop down and select it and then click save so if I save this as timeline and then I click save if I then open a new document you can see at the top here I've got templates if you go to more templates you'll see you've got personal at the top here within personal we'll have something here called timeline now that will always appear in your templates once you click on it you can then go ahead and change anything you want because when you come to save it word will ask you to save it as a brand new document so it will never spoil the original if you do want a copy of this timeline please click in the link below so i hope that's helped you today if it has please like and subscribe and have a great day